From the point of view of U.S. power, he's harming it. But from the point of view of U.S. elites, he's giving them everything they want. I mean, in fact, what's going on in the United States, if you think about it, is kind of a two-level uh, wrecking ball, if you want to call it that. Uh, Trump, his role, whether this is conscious or not, I don't know, but you can see what, what's happening. Trump's role is to ensure that the media and that public attention are always concentrated on him. So every time you turn on a television set, it's Trump. You open the front page of the newspaper, Trump. And in order to maintain, he's a con man, basically, a showman. And in order to maintain uh, public attention, you have to do something crazy. Otherwise, nobody's going to pay attention to you. If you do normal things, you'll be you know, way back somewhere. So every day there's one insane thing after another. And then, you know, the media he makes some crazy lie. You know, he had the biggest crowd in history or something. The media looks at it and says, no, it wasn't the biggest crowd. But meanwhile, he's on to something else. And then you go to that one. And while this show is going on in public, the, uh, well, in the background, uh, the wrecking crew is working. Uh, Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, uh, um, the guys in the cabinet who write his uh, executive orders. What they're doing is systematically dismantling every aspect of government that works for the benefit of the population. Uh, this goes from workers' rights to uh, uh, pollution, pollution, pollution of the environment, uh, uh, the, uh, rules for uh, protecting consumers. I mean, anything you can think of is being dismantled. And all efforts are being devoted, kind of almost with fanaticism, to enrich and empower their actual constituency, which is super wealth and corporate power who are delighted. That's why the stock market goes up. Stock market has not much to do with the economy, but keeps booming because that's the rich people and they love being granted. Now, the worst policies that he's carrying out, the most dangerous, are barely discussed. Now, those are uh, the two existential threats that we face. You have to face the fact that humans are now in a situation which has never arisen in human history. Now, this generation has to decide whether organized human existence is going to continue. And it's not a joke. It's uh, global warming and nuclear war. Those are the major issues. They ought to be big headlines every day. And Trump's uh, actions are making both of them much more dangerous. In the case of nuclear war, the policies are significantly increasing the threat of nuclear war. In the case of global warming, it's almost indescribable that not only has the U.S. pulled out uniquely, alone in the world, it's pulled out from the international efforts to do at least something about it. But beyond that, it's the Trump administration is going out of its way to increase the threat. Uh, look listen to his State of the Union address. So the only phrase about global climate was to talk about our beautiful clean coal, uh, the worst polluter there is, uh, which we have, uh, we have a thousand years of it, you know. And uh, look at the new budgets that's coming out. Sharply cuts research and support for any kind of renewable energy, more subsidies and support for the most polluting, destructive things. And, and it's not just Trump, it's the entire Republican leadership. So if you look at the 2016 election, at the primaries, every single candidate, not a single exception, either denied that global warming is taking place or said maybe it is, but we shouldn't do anything about it, which I think is worse. They were called the moderates, like uh, Kasich. So then, and if you look at Trump himself, or say Rex Tillerson, Secretary of State, they know perfectly well that humans are 
causing global warming. In fact, uh, Trump has golf courses all over. And he's, he hasn't built a wall in Mexico yet, but he's building walls around his golf courses to make sure that the sea level doesn't destroy them. Uh, Rex Tillerson was CEO of ExxonMobil. Uh, since the 1970s, scientists at ExxonMobil have been, uh, we now know they've been uh, made public, forced to be made public. They've been producing severe warnings to the leadership about the effect of the use of uh, petroleum on destroying the environment. So they all know about it, but they're not doing anything about it, which is a level of uh, criminality that it's almost hard to find words to describe. I mean, here are, you know, educated, uh, well-off, uh, rich uh, people, upper elite, who know that what they're doing is destroying the prospects for Thank human, you, organized human life, and do it anyway because they make more profit tomorrow. Uh, can you think of an analog to that in human history? I, I really can't. I mean, I've said sometimes uh, what's considered an out utterly outrageous comment that the today's Republican Party is the most dangerous organization in human history. Sounds outrageous, but think about it for a moment. I mean, Hitler didn't intend to destroy the prospects for human existence. Uh, Attila the Hun didn't intend that. Nobody has. But that's what these guys intend. And it's not ignorant, uneducated, you know, religious fundamentalists, whatever you want to you know, blame people. These are the most educated, uh, best supported people in the world. And they're doing this eyes open because you can make more profit tomorrow. It's hard to imagine anything like it. And it's, it's not just my opinion. It takes, say, the uh, bulletin of the atomic science, the doomsday clock, famous doomsday clock. It's, set up by the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists since 1947. They, each year they gather distinguished physicists, political analysts, others to look at the state of the world and make a judgment of how far we are from terminal disaster. Midnight is terminal disaster. In 1947, the clock was set seven minutes to midnight it's after the atom bomb. Moved up and back since. Now it's at the closest it's been to midnight ever. They just moved it to two minutes to midnight. That's where it was in 1953 when the U.S. and later the USSR exploded uh, thermonuclear weapons, which were could totally destroy the world. So it went to two minutes. Now it's back to two minutes. And that's the Republican Party. That's the ones who are running the country and dominating the world. There's never been a situation like this.